Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships. How many of you got stuck in your narcissistic relationship? Because at some point you felt that this was your person, that it was destiny, that it was magic, that there were too many coincidences to turn away from. And even when the narcissism stuff began, you were so caught up in the magic, you got stuck. Let's talk about these dangers. When it comes to love, it is so tempting to get lost in that something was destined by the stars, that this was someone who was chosen. But again, I'm going to put this to you as a question. How many of you have had the experience of convincing yourself that this relationship, any relationship even you've had, that was somehow destined or fated, or there was a sign or a psychic told you that this person was the one? So I want you to sit with that question for a minute. As you sit with that, I'm just going to give you that friendly reminder as I do, because it's this month. I have a brand new book. It's coming out on February 20th. It's called It's Not You, Identifying and Healing from Narcissistic People. If you want to check it out, the link to pre-order is down in the video description. It's good to pre-order it because you get a bunch of other goodies if you do. So go back to that question, right? How many of you believe in the idea of destiny or magic or fate? How many of you have gotten lost in one perfect night, one perfect night where everything lined up so perfectly that it seemed like the relationship was divinely destined? You know what I mean? You both looked at your watch and it was 11-11 and your, or your date happened on November 11th and you saw, saw a shooting star when you left the restaurant and the restaurant opened on the same day as your birthday or whatever series of coincidences that left you believing that this is a sign, right? I have talked with or worked with many, many clients who have wasted years, 25, 30, 40 years because of one perfect night. The night that believed them made them believe that this relationship was destiny, that the universe was giving them signs, that their ancestors made a rainbow, which was a sign that this was their person. And every time there's the red flags and the abuse and the devaluation piled up, every time they thought, mm, maybe these patterns aren't healthy, maybe this isn't my person, they would be swept back to the signs that once made them convinced that this person was somehow specially chosen for them. And those signs would sometimes mean that the person would keep fighting for the relationship because how often do you get signs, right? The love bombing part of a narcissistic relationship can really play into this. If there is a chance meeting you have, for example, you meet the person on a city bus, you may get lost in the idea that, oh, what if I didn't walk faster? Or what if I didn't sit in this part of the bus? There's so many random factors that go into you being on that bus, in that seat, that if you were to meet someone on that bus, it feels almost like it was meant to be which can be a very dangerous way to think about a relationship. And sadly, we can twist this in any number of ways. We may reconnect with someone from a hometown and wonder if this was destiny visiting us after all these years. Or you miss a flight and you meet someone in the airport as you were stuck and think, oh, if I had made the original flight, I would have missed my destiny. It's a very romantic way to think, right? So the love bombing can mean, and the love bombing sort of meets this magical moment. The narcissistic person may really run with this. Things like, oh, thank goodness we both missed the train. This is the most special love story, et cetera, et cetera, right? Narcissistic folks like to think that they are in an otherworldly and special love story. It plays beautifully with their fantasy world and grandiose and entitled thinking but you may have just been a sweet person who believed in signs and romance and the stars because it's really sweet and strangely reassuring to believe in those things. And it can really help the narcissistic person sort of double down on the love bombing by encouraging the idea that this relationship is somehow destined. So many rom-com movies and other tropes Focus on this idea of the meet cute or the destined meetup or the we didn't meet and then we did meet or I come back to you into your life from the past. And when this happens, people are actually more 
vulnerable to trauma bonding because this idea of magic creates a very sort of strong fiber to the trauma bond. I mean, who can really fight the universe or destiny or something that feels like a magical confluence? It would make any of us feel special. And then there are the psychics, right? You know, the person you pay because you're still sort of kind of trying to figure it all out who will tell you, you're going to meet someone, he will be tall, she will be foreign, I'm seeing blonde hair or maybe it's gray hair that I'm seeing. The psychic may say, oh, I, say I see boats or does he have a dog? Or does he sail? And you say, oh, yes, yes, yes. His neighbor has a dog he really likes. And he used to take fairies to work. We can make anything fit. And you will then actually meet maybe the toxic blonde person or the dysregulated person with the foreign accent. You make them fit because someone else magically told you that this is your person. The justifications that can come from this idea of destiny or that one night you have filled with signs or the psychic who tells you that the blonde guy with a dog is your soulmate, when that happens and they start behaving badly, the justifications will be fast, furious, and rigid. And it may be more difficult for you or even other people to break through that. Every time you start feeling like the relationship is not okay, you may fall back into your destiny. 11-11, we met on a leap year. He gave me a four-leaf clover. The psychic said, so our grandmothers have the same middle name. We both once had dogs named Spot type rationalizations. The deep fear that you are making a mistake, that this kind of magic comes only once in a lifetime. Oh, so this isn't a very romantic YouTube channel. Let me tell you, Here's the wake-up call. Being invalidated is not magic. Gaslighting is not magic. Having someone mock you or treat you dismissively, not magic. It's not magic to be betrayed, lied to, or raged at. Some people believe that maybe this bad stuff that happens, oh, it's just part of the complicated, magical journey when you are in a destined relationship full of signs and even more magic. Wanting to find the mythical, perfect person, the nonsense of believing someone completes you, of finding the one who was that person from a past life. It's a dangerous trap for a narcissistic relationship. Folks with narcissistic personalities love this superficial and grandiose positioning. If you truly believe there is something otherworldly happening in a relationship, you may fight for it with a zeal that you may not if this is just a random person that you met on Hinge. It's fun and poetic to believe we are part of some sort of intergalactic karmic magic, but it can be a dangerous setup to getting stuck, to easily falling for the Hoover, for rationalizing the bad stuff as the opportunity cost of being in a destined relationship. One magical date where many cute coincidences happen is fun. But don't let it block you from seeing warning signs and red flags clearly. Most healthy love stories don't have these magic destiny origin stories. Healthy love stories are generally tales of friendship, companionship, laughter, compassion, and above all, respect. When I think offhand about the 10 healthiest couples I know, I hate to say it, but there's nothing magical about them. It's watching two people who make compromises, feel safe, laugh loudly, laugh loudly, talk it out, share responsibility, know who they are, and listen to each other. They don't see psychics to figure out if it's going to work out. They just know that whatever happens, it's going to be fine. For anyone, who had narcissistic or invalidating parents, the pull of signs, magic, and destiny can be compelling. When we grow up like that, we do not feel special. And in fact, kids with narcissistic parents may even cope by turning into fantasy worlds where parents love us or people see us and love us as fantasies of adults that don't that don't just go away. And the feeling of being in something that is magical and predestined can feel like a soothing offset 
to the desolation of being invalidated and shamed for simply being yourself in childhood. But do recognize that healing can be much more difficult when you are managing this destiny, magic, this only happens once in a lifetime stuff. If you're even able to step out of one of these, or if they leave, the hopelessness can be magnified. You may lose a sense of faith, of trust, and of magic. You will find it more difficult to leave, and radical acceptance can also feel hard to hold in your hands. Because the pull of the magic and the signs and what the psychic said can mean, you might actually think, oh, the narcissism stuff doesn't apply here. This is something that's sort of written in the stars. It's fun to read about, again, those faded, destiny, magical love stories or watch them in a movie. But recognize that a lot of these woo-woo magic beliefs are often weaponized by narcissistic folks or play on your own wounds and can really facilitate you getting stuck for even longer in a relationship that's not good for you. Find the magic in yourself. Thanks again.